Hey everyone, Julian here. Welcome to episode 11 of the Learning Flask series. In this episode, we're going to be working with query strings. Now, don't worry if you don't know what a query string is or you've never used one, we're going to cover that in this video. Essentially, the way to think of it is a query string is a set of keys and values which are encoded into the URL. And we make a GET request to the server with that URL and then we have the ability to pass and serialize that data in the URL into a set of keys and values. So I think an example is in order. So let's head up to, well, first things first, text-based tutorial of this, link in the description. If we come to Google, for example, and search for query string, and we take a look up at the URL here, you can see it's quite long. We've got a fair bit of information in here. What I'm going to do, because I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but I'm just going to go ahead and copy um, only a portion of this and then I'll paste that into VS Code and you'll probably be able to get a better look at it. So, copy that and then paste that here so hopefully you can see that a bit better. So, we've got the protocol, of course. We've got the domain, followed by the path. So, we've got slash search. Just like we would, you know, here, for example, in one of our uh, app routes, we've got slash guestbook. It's google.com slash search is going to take you to the homepage of Google search. Now, the query string itself is this portion here. So we've got the uh, uh, question mark, which starts the query string. And then we've got a set of keys and values separated by an equals. So in this case, we've got Q equals query plus string. And you'll notice we've got the plus here, but we didn't search for query plus string, we searched for query string. And the reason we got the plus is because there's some characters that aren't allowed in a URL and a space is one of them. And the space gets substituted with a plus or a percent 20. In this case, it's a plus. You'll then notice here we've got the ampersand and what that does, it just separates the keys and the values. So here you can see we've got the first key is uh, the first key is Q, followed by a value of query plus string. And then the next argument or next set of queries is OQ. And the value for that is uh, query plus string again. I mean, we could just essentially get rid of that there. And let's just try copying that, pasting that into Google, and there we go. We still get the results. It's just Google adds a few extra um, a few extra parameters and values up in the query string there. So I hope that explains kind of the basics of what a query string is. So how do we work with them in Flask? Well, let me make a bit more space here and let's go ahead and start working with some. So let's create a new route and I'm just gonna call this query. And then we'll create a function underneath. And for now, I'm just going to return just some text saying, no, let's say query received. And we'll throw in a 200 for good measure. So of course now, if we come down to our server, make sure Flask is running. Oh, not Flax run. Flask run, so our app is up and running. And if we come to the local development server and just head to query, there we go. We get some text there just saying that our query has been received, but of course we haven't sent it a query yet. So why don't we go ahead and create our own query? So we know that the, uh, the path is query. So let's just construct one here in VS Code and then we'll copy and paste access a little bit bigger in here so hopefully you can see a bit better so why don't we do something like the following foo equals foo and then what we want to do is separate those so we use the ampersand bar equals bar and then another one so we'll separate that with an ampersand and then let's do baz equals baz and one more let's just put title equals query plus strings with plus flask. There we go. So we've got four sets of keys and values there, all separated with the ampersand. And in our title one, 
we're substituting out the spaces for plus symbols. So let's go ahead and copy that, save. And then what I'm going to do is just paste that directly in after query and go ahead and hit return. And there we go, it's submitted the URL. We haven't got any errors, but of course we're not actually doing anything with these values. So how do we access these values? Well, just like we did with forms and just like we did with uh, posting JSON up to the server, we use the, uh, the request object, which has got a couple of handy features for uh, to allow us to work with uh, query strings. So I'm going to create a variable called args and then assign that a value of request.args. And then I'm just going to go ahead and print args for now. And let's see what we get. So pay attention to the terminal here. And then when we come and reload this page, there we go. We get something printed out and we've got an immutable multi-dict, which is effectively just a, a special class of dictionary with keys and values nicely serialized. So we can see here we've got foo and foo, bar is bar, baz is baz, and the title is query strings with flask. So what's going on here? Well, just like request.form and request.getjson, it's just a convenient way that provides Flask provides us um, to pass any incoming query strings and it's going to serialize that into a nice dictionary-like object that we can work with. So for example, if we replace this with uh, 4kv in args.items, we could then go ahead and just print. Let's do a f string, a bit of uh, interpolation there, and kv. So now if we go ahead and save and reload, and if you check down here in the terminal, we get a nicely formatted set of keys and values all printed on a new line. So you can effectively treat the args object like a dictionary. So, you know, we could start plucking out values that we're expecting. So we could say if foo in args, then we'll assign foo the value. So foo equals um, args dot get foo and then we could print foo so now we go ahead and refresh that there we go we get foo and that's so we want to change the value for foo let's just go and I'll just stick my name in there go ahead and refresh that didn't work there we go, we get my name being printed out here, which has been saved as the foo variable. So things to remember, um, you need to make sure you have request imported. So I probably should have mentioned that uh, before we started using it. We do have request here up at the top from some previous episodes, but if you haven't imported it, then go ahead and make sure you've got uh, the following. So from Flask, import request. So just make sure you've got that when you're working with args. So what else can we do? Well, to be honest, that's probably the most important thing to show you with um, query strings. What we could do, for example, if we don't know whether this route is going to receive a query string or not, we could do if, if request.args, then we can assign the uh, args object to a new variable. So we could do args equals request dot args. And then you could start iterating through all of the arguments in the query string, saving them as variables, doing things, you know, you could start looking up things in a database, for example, and we are going to cover database shortly in this series. So for now, we could just do something similar to what we did if title in args title equals args dot get and you don't have to use dot get you could use uh, the square brackets so you could do something like title and if you don't want to save them uh, to a variable you could just emit that completely and put request dot args dot get title and now we'll go ahead and print 
our title and if you pay attention to the terminal you see we get the title printed out query strings with flask so what else do i want to do um why don't we just do a little bit more on this um and return something to the browser so how about we do um we'll create a nicely serialized string so what we can do is um let's make a new string and we'll join them with just a comma join and then what we'll do is another f string in here and we'll do a little bit of string interpolation in a uh, in a string like so so we'll put k v and then for k v in args dot items that should work for us that should give us a nicely formatted string and then what we'll do is return um, how do I want to do this query and then we'll we need to use another f string here and then we'll just go ahead and dump the serialized query in there and then if we don't receive any arguments we'll just return no query received it doesn't matter if that's 200 or not so that should work let's uh let's take a quick look here so if we go ahead and refresh that there we go we get our query and then we've serialized all of that data using a little bit of comprehension here and use the uh, dot join method join them together and then we're just kind of dumping that back into the browser so that's pretty much everything to cover with query strings that you're going to be using um there are a few other things like for example let's go ahead and i'm just going to get rid of that for now uh, you could do print request dot query string and then if we go ahead and reload the page you can see there it gives us a query string all as a single string there um, and that's pretty much it. That is everything I wanted to show you guys on query strings. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you're enjoying the series, be sure to subscribe. I've got plenty more videos coming soon. And uh, if you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like on the video. It helps me out. So as always, text-based version of this guide is over at the website. Link in the description. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.